Good morning and welcome to Coffee Grind Gossip with Crystal. And I already got my coffee ready and made me, made me a simple breakfast, just scrambled eggs and some cut up avocado. So I'm going to talk about uh, the subject of financial abuse. As you see the title, I'm not an ATM. So as I get this breakfast started, we're going to talk about the subjects. It's honestly... Just so you know, it's a little, it's an uncomfortable subject that needs to be talked about. All right, so stay tuned. Here we go. Okay, let me get straight to the topic. And thank you for tuning in. Coffee Crying Gossip with Crystal. Okay, you see the title. I am not an ATM machine. Okay, first of all, let's take it to the top. What is financial abuse? Let's start right there. All right, so here is the definition of a financial abuse. Before I tell you, give you the definition of what a financial abuser is, just know, unfortunately, you know, I have to say this, which is true. Just Google it. Most financial abusers are their family members, believe it or not, especially um, when it comes to elderly abuse and take advantage of um, elderly uh, people's financial resources. Just want to put that out there. Just Google it. That's not nothing I made up. Me being um, a former banker since I was in my 20s, all the way up till I retire in my was early, early 50s, I've seen it. I've, I've seen it and it, it's really sad. But here's the um, characteristics of what a financial abuser is so look at this screen right quick you know at some point um we do have to take accountability um when we keep giving folks money knowing they can't give it back to us sometimes when um certain family members not all of them just those those handfuls that we know know that are beggars sometimes we just give it to them because we don't even want to hear the story because some of them can will manufacture up a sob story in order to get sympathy and then, then of course you get in the money okay the the first time and second time is okay but you have to know when it becomes a habit, and then that's when you stop feeling like an ATM machine. So when you start getting to the point where you say enough is enough, and you just tell them no, then let me tell you what's going to happen when you finally tell them no after you get the money two, three, four times. Then they're going to start coming for you. Then it, you'll get attitude, which is fine. That it is, oh well. But the, the problem is that that would have been eliminated had we said no the second time. And what I what I find out, that, and the reason why, let me tell you the reason why I'm doing this um, video. It's it's a hard subject and um, a, lot of, a lot of you are going to agree with me because you've been victimized by financial abusers and both your family um or a person outside outside of your family no no matter who it is is that talking to a former co-worker we used to work at the bank I won't mention the name of the bank many many moons and stars ago and she was actually being uh financially abused um by her husband now here's here's unfortunately if it's a husband and a wife situation i really i really can't comment on that because that's their marriage if you're not married and you know you really can't comment but it, it was really sad because 
he totally controlled and manipulated every paycheck she got. I mean, it's nothing we can do about that, you know, especially if she's been used to that for so many years. But honestly, it is sad because the, the statistics, that's it, right? Statistics, okay, shows, and you can Google this. I ain't make this up, fellas, that most uh, financial abusers, 60s plus percent of them are men. Fellas, don't get mad. Don't, don't come for me. Please just Google it. Just Google it, okay? But... This does happen in marriages, but um, to that degree, I'm talking about right now the subject, you know, you're not an ATM machine. Uh, we can't keep giving people just because they're our family members. These are family members. I'm not talking about all, I'm not talking about the family members who borrow money from you and pay it back within a couple of days. Those are the stand on business family members because there was a time I had to borrow a few dollars from uh, my sister uh, just just for me for bus fare uh, a few years back at the job that I'm still in now. This kind of, That's different. You borrow, you pay it back. Really, so we're not talking about those people. We're talking about the ones who really underlie, disrespect you, don't care. These are people... Not just family members or other other um, acquaintances. Anytime somebody calls you out of the blue, all they do is call you when they need something. Knowing they can't pay you back. Knowing they don't have the resources, not one ounce of resources to pay you back. But the main thing that gets me about them is that they don't even care that you got your own obligations to take care of. They don't care that you just paid off all your bills. They don't care that you got to feed your kids, uh, uh, help take care of grandkids, um, help out with elderly parents. They don't care that you got to, you need every dollar to eat because food is so high. They don't care about that. They're self-centered. Me, me, just give me uh, uh, $20, $30. So, and guess what, what some of them do with their money? They don't do what they're supposed to do. I don't mind giving people uh, money for, if it's a dire need, emergency. But if, if you're getting money from me for <clears throat> entertainment purposes, you want to um, drink, smoke, impress, then I see you on social media acting like you're, living high on the horse and you don't even have a, a pot to piss in a window to throw it out of because your social media followers have no idea that you just called they just called you for some money see no we don't not going to do that you have to learn at a point to say you know what no you can't do it they just going to have to be mad because when you're coming out of your pocket to give someone money. Like I said, you know they can't pay you back. You know we can't. Now you got to write that off as a loss. You ain't gonna get the money back. You call me, it, it, uh, uh, you had 30, $30? Yeah, yeah, here. Even though you say here is $30, but I'm not gonna give you any more money. Guess what's gonna happen? A month or two later, they're gonna call you back. And they got to break that cycle. Okay, so this is how you break the cycle. Check this out. So how do you respond to people who call you out of the blue, begging for money, knowing you gave them some money last month ago? How you respond? This is how you respond to a, let them know this. Number one, my expenses have gone up. My rent has gone up. My taxes are higher. Food prices are higher. My insurance has gone up. My living expenses has gone up, my friend. I cannot give you any money. I gave you money last time that I never got back. Number two, oh, hold on, I got it written down. 
ask them this here. If I get into a financial crunch, can I ask you for money to help me like I help you? Now, you know, dang on well, they ain't pay you back the first uh, couple of times back. Ask them that question. Ask if I get in the financial, if I get behind on my mortgage, can I ask you, do you have $50 to help me like I've helped you when you called me out of the blue for money? Watch their response. You might get a sarcastic answer like, well, I'm, I'm only asking you for, for $10. You know what you tell them? Gas is $30. Okay. And finally, the last one that will probably run them away is just basically tell them, I am not an ATM machine. And not only that, track all the money that you gave them. I didn't say lend them. I said gave them and let them know. You'll probably get another sarcastic answer. I'm only asking for $10. dollars only ask for $20. You act like I'm asking for $1,000. You might get that response. And I hope you get that response because that'll be enough ammunition to tell them where to go. In other words, you know what? You can you can get your ass a job. That's what you can do. You since you want to go that route because you got some of them that will. The the the, the problem is here with um, people constantly asking um, for money when they see what you have. They 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 look at what your your possessions and think, oh okay, she must got a. She got it. Oh, she just got to bought a new car, which means she must got some money or he must got some money. That's what they that's what they look at. They don't look at how much that new car note is, how much that new insurance is. Remember, bakers and financial abusers are self-centered. It's all about them. Just, you know, I know you got bills and all that other stuff, but I, I just need you know, you to help me out with this. So th think about this. So that's how you steer them away probably for, for good, you know, and hoping that they get themselves together because what's going to happen is if, if you keep on giving financial abusers um, your resources, What's going to happen is that, it, it, because, ugh, I don't know, how, how can I say this? Some people are actually bullied into gi giving them, you know, money because they, they just don't, they just want to get them off their back. But guess what's going to happen if you keep doing that? It's going to be our fault if we keep enabling them. We're going to end up broke. And we don't want to go that route. So I hope this video helps. Put your comments if you're going through, um, if you've ever been financially abused. Some of you are probably still going through. And just uh, take what you can out the video. And thanks so much for joining me. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.